Hello, and welcome again to Let's Play Shadows of Om. This is Palsy of Madness. Last time we picked up the G-Stick. Staff of the Magi. This is one of the most ridiculously overpowered artifacts in a game full of ridiculously overpowered artifacts. Rare though it is, there's only one in the game. You only really need one. There was a uh, dude who was posting to uh, the comments of an earlier uh, session said that the Staff of the Magi had an immunity to charm that was built in, and I said, really, I've never noticed that, but it's actually right here. <laughs> uh, I don't know if this is... I mean, I, I did install a mod to fix this, because the protection from evil is not natively attached to this little bit of equipment it's supposed to be, and it gives you the color change that tells you that you're protected from evil, but demons still attack you. So there's a mod that you can get that fixes that, and I don't know if it put this into the description, but uh, it's quite upfront about giving you immunity to charm. It's right here. What the... we actually will most be using it for, though, is these two things, especially the saving throws. I'm actually not sure what the purpose is on this. I don't know how often I use it. I probably will never use it. Uh, this is, of course, very helpful. And this is its only downside. It strikes as a plus five weapon. It's considered a plus five weapon for determining what it can hit, but it only actually does plus one damage. And the two-hit bonus is only plus one also. That's the only downside to this otherwise outstanding <laughs> little piece of equipment, which uh, I always call a cheese stick, because it's very cheesy. Hmm. Nothing to it. Now we're okay, working for the uh, Cult of the Unseen Eye. We're on a quest for them. Be wary, my friends. Someone has come before us. I can sense it. When I discovered that this thing that I was worshipping as a god is actually just a fucking beholder, I mean, Gaul was totally upfront with the fact that the unseeing eye is just a beholder. I don't know why Sasser was led astray. I don't even understand. Actually, it's, as far as I can tell, protected by just not existing until it's generated for us. <laughs> he just told us several times that we weren't supposed to be doing this, but now he says, oh yes, do this. Not true. You can actually kill the unseeing eye without the rod. It's just kind of a pain in the ass. Your god was the unseeing eye. And he's not gonna do that. Okay. I'm waiting. Whatever you want. So here are the blind followers of the unseeing eye. I trust that all is well. Ex followers, you might say. Good day to you. Yes. Now we're just gonna head on down. There's a trap down here. 
Tell me all about it. I think it's a uh, if you say so. Lightning bolt. I'm waiting. That's what you There we go. Shadow fiends, shadows, and a wraith. as a level drainer. Just like the vampires, the amount of damage it does is uh, very small, but uh, it can kill you nevertheless. Okay. Hmm. Keep. Uh, I think when we were just finishing it up, I started talking about a uh, bread recipe. That I call the bread of ultimate privilege because. There's not really a better term for it. <laughs> Tell me all about it. Hmm. I'm with Is that all? <laughs> Freaking huge Tell spider. Me all about it. The, uh, in talking about the bread of ultimate privilege, which is, as you recall, is just a uh, sourdough bread, more or less. Mm. So it's a sourdough bread with a fancy, uh, a fancy recipe. <laughs> that there's anything inherently bad about sourdough bread. Yes. Actually, quite the contrary. Uh, I personally don't care for ass. it, but uh, a lot of people really like it, and objectively it seems to be something that many people enjoy. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm waiting. Yes. Vita! <laughs> Okay, there's a 
trap here and it uh, seems to be kind of variable as to what effect it actually produces. So we're going to protect ourselves against a couple of different things. we're looking at here. Three beholders, two gals. Okay. No biggie. Tell me all about it. It's just a sourdough bread and uh, the New York Times article about it wanted it to seem super hardcore so it never mentioned that it was sourdough. <laughs> Yeah, trying to get them to use their death spells. That's the whole purpose here. It said that it takes two weeks from start to finish. Uh, including, apparently, the uh, amount of time that it takes to make the starter. I've used those uh, kinds of that is your standard for how long uh, uh, it takes to make something. <laughs> San Francisco sour bread dough uh, bread have taken 150 years to make. Because you know you're including the amount of time that you spent on the starter. The trap here. There we go. It's still ineffective. Very good. Yes. And I don't think that was quite uh, what they intended, <laughs> but that is what they uh, what they managed. You know, two weeks from start to finish makes it sound like it's this ultra hardcore recipe, but really it's, it's just a sourdough. 150 years from start to finish is uh, much more hardcore than that.
as the one almost wanders his way. And this, of course, would be extremely difficult, if not impossible, for a solo sorcerer, except for the fact that we have cure light wounds right here as a ball spawn power. Speak of yourself. You are almost beyond the sight of eye. Not so epic a danger as once he thought. I weep for my children. Their hate sustains this place. Though they would intend otherwise. Had they not thought of me at all, I would have perished. And soon after, so would they. question is, why didn't you do this before? Yes! I see in your mind the way to release this place. You seek the great device for another, though you owe them no allegiance, and they intend to kill you. that I possess, and ye shall combine it with the piece the creature already has. The assembled rod would surely destroy the beast. You must use the item upon the beast, and then return it to me. Use it but once, or you will perish under its power. Except that it doesn't destroy the unseeing eye, it strips all its buffs and reduces it to one hit point, but it doesn't actually kill it. Tell my people that you carry the peace that I give you, that you might deplete it, that you go to restore its components so that it may be disposed of as a whole, not in part. My people must know I intend to destroy it when you return. But more, they must know I intend to end their service. The voice file obviously contains a lot of dialogue that's not actually in this written paragraph. This simple act of bringing together the two parts of the rod will instill a small amount of faith for an instant. If they are in my presence, 
Such an instant will allow me to destroy the artifact. Why the hell didn't he do this at the beginning? Why all this rigmarole of guarding it for all time and these people outside are, you know, they're reborn over and over through some mechanism I don't under actually understand. Are they having sex with each other and having children? I, I assume not. They know what's going to happen. <laughs> so what happens? You know, somebody dies and then a baby is just like found around the corner? I, I don't understand. about this bread, uh, I brought up an, uh, something that is uh, quite fundamental to the entire field of economics, yes. which is the concept of a opportunity cost. In brief, an opportunity cost is, what would you be doing if you weren't doing this? If I weren't doing a Baldur's Gate Let's Play, I'd probably be cross-stitching. So the progress that I'm making on my, or that I could be making on my cross-stitch, but I'm not because I'm instead doing this recording, is the opportunity cost that I'm paying in order to do this recording. That's pretty much all there is to that. It's a kind of a simple idea. These I don't understand. It looks absolutely pornographic, <laughs> but in a way that I just I don't actually comprehend. It looks like a dude. He's squatting. He's you know got his arms around his big belly, and he's holding his giant dick. <laughs> but surely that can't actually be what that is. Surely they would not have put that in this game. <laughs> so, I don't actually understand what's going on with that. It would be foolish to have to render the interior of another building, so we didn't. I'm waiting. An opportunity cost is... Uh, yes. Oh, that's right. We leveled. Of course. Level up. Level 20. Pretty epic. That's appreciated. As a neutral, uh, we can get either of these, but I think the regular plane tar is more useful. So that's what we're gonna get. Level 9. What do we want? Probably chain contingency would be the best to get this time. Yeah. Okay. Most opportunity costs are not monetary in nature. Um, you know, most opportunity costs are. Well, what if you were doing if you weren't doing Tell this? Tell me all about it. Well, I'd be taking a nap. <laughs> but you can uh, nevertheless put mm. a dollar value on if opportunity costs. I'm waiting. Yes. Because uh, one of the things that you could be doing if you weren't doing this. Tell me all about whatever you decide. Hmm. Working for some kind of a wage. What would I be doing if I weren't doing this? Well, I'd be cross stitching. What if I weren't cross stitching? Uh, I'd probably be reading a book. What if there were no books? You know, we go down the list until we find gainful employment. I'm waiting. Chris Alia Zero. Tell me all about it. Oh, 
shit. A damn wandering horror killed itself. Son of a bitch. put a dollar value on an opportunity cost, even if your actual opportunity cost is not Oh, I exhausted it with the, okay Your opportunity cost is not literally monetary. <laughs> I can still put a dollar value on it by saying what how much would you be making <laughs> if you were working for you know employment. of economic theory is that uh, let's say you have two people okay one is a lawyer and uh, she is on a global hour system so if she wants to make more money she just has to work a little more and she'll bring in an, an hourly wage that is quite significant let's say that after taxes and everything the hourly wage she actually brings in is going to be let's say I don't know Hmm. 40 bucks an hour. I'm waiting. Good. Yes. Tell me all about it. And more often I do this. The fewer swords I get. Incaptive. 
woman who, if she wanted to, she could make, uh, you know, 40 bucks an hour, but instead she is uh, taking the day off. Yeah. Tell me about that. In economic terms, Not uh, it. it's said that she is purchasing her mm. leisure time. She's buying this day off. Okay, so I guess we'll <laughs> run those out. Yeah, those are not infinite. I'm waiting. Whatever you want. That's just another death fog. Which is not terribly dangerous to us. I mean, you don't want to just stand around in it, but... We don't need to run away either. Cloud kill, not death ball. Tell me all about it. Okay. Hmm. So, uh, she's uh, buying her leisure time. And you could say that uh, her leisure, I'm waiting. the ability to have a day just to do nothing, is worth more to her than 40 bucks an hour. In uh, economic terms, not doing a thing if that's what you that want. would bring you money is actually the same as actually paying out that money. Uh, is that you? Have you returned successful? In order to not be working. Remember, it's a niche. If he weren't a beholder, if he were just a dude, he'd store the rod in his pocket. <laughs> but he's a beholder, so he needs a niche. For this uh, lawyer lady to not be working and instead to be taking the day off is exactly the same as her paying out money to someone in the amount of at least $40 an hour uh, in order to have this day off. Kneel and repent. Stop your old beliefs and be saved. <laughs> Kneel and repent. Okay. So now, just in case we need to know where the Pit of the Faithless is, this guy's gonna show us. Repent. 
pray to whom? Okay. So here we go. this woman's leisure time, this uh, lawyer lady's leisure time. Is worth no less than forty dollars an hour and probably more than that. Because the forty dollars an hour is a cool a minimum value. Hmm, nothing to it. So take a another person who uh I'm waiting. Whatever you want. Is instead employed at minimum wage. And like many people are employed at minimum wage, this person can't actually survive on this person job. works uh, actually all the time and um, almost every waking hour is full of employment of some kind. Someone uh, for whom seven dollars and twenty five cents an hour is more valuable than leisure. And therefore doesn't actually take any leisure. Well, economics, uh, economics is kind of a very close kissing cousin to utilitarianism. And utilitarianism uh, seeks to uh, maximize uh, the happiness of the world, uh, which is referred to as utility, or referred to in terms of utility. I think I want to get rid of hmm. these. I'm whatever you want. I was going to just leave them out here, but I think that's actually probably not a good plan. <laughs>
have a town. This is not a town like the living. Oh, it's 
Bill's at. It's a little beer. It's almost done. <laughs> Vita! Theory sees this and says, Well, she values her leisure time at less than $7.25 an hour. This uh, lawyer values her leisure time at in excess of $40 an hour. And so, utilitarianism, to which uh, economic theory is very closely linked would say that the obvious uh, thing to do then is to maximize the leisure time enjoyed by the lawyer. At least, uh, um, when uh, connected to uh, economics, utilitarianism would say that. Actually, straight up utilitarianism would not make that point. What do you like? Because straight up utilitarianism does not pretend to uh, not be able it. to measure the happiness that is experienced by two different people. The only way that you can measure happiness uh, or utility is whatever you want. Uh, asking uh, any individual person you know, how happy are you? Are you more happy today than you were yesterday? If the answer is yes, then great. Utility has been uh, increased. You know? two people, you know, are you happy citizen? And one says yes. And the other one also says yes. Then, uh, how do you measure that? How do you decide of which of these two people uh, has the more valuable happiness? Economic theory actually has an answer to that. If you say so. Uh, it says that uh, you value happiness by um, Tell me all about of course. saying how much will somebody pay for it. <laughs> The 
the assumption is that a dollar is worth a dollar to everyone, no matter who they are. Ooh. That's a lot of EXP sitting right there. It's also probably several death spells. So let's send these guys down. One at a time. I'm waiting. Get rid of that death spell. Those death spells, of which there are probably three. Yeah, one cast a death spell. Economics proposes to have an answer to how do you measure between two uh, individuals yes. as to, you know, who has the more valuable happiness. Tell me all about and it. This assumes that a dollar is worth a dollar to everyone. Hmm. Everyone puts the same value on a dollar, and that is one dollar's worth. And so you measure somebody's happiness by how much they're willing to pay for whatever you're talking about. There's a certain logic in that. But then you run into situations like the one we're talking about here, where uh, one person's happiness is being valued at 40 bucks an hour, and another person's happiness is being valued at 7.25 an hour. And the only difference between the two of them is that one is uh, wealthier than the other and has the ability Tell me whatever you to want. buy leisure time, whereas the other one has to choose between hmm. leisure time and uh, eating. <laughs> It's not necessarily that she puts a low value on leisure, but that she puts a lower value on leisure than she does on food. Utilitarianism doesn't try to make that. It just says, are you happy? And if the answer is yes, then that's good. Uh, are you happier today than you were yesterday, citizen? Tell me all about it. If the answer is yes, then that's great. Of now course. that utility has been increased. If the answer is no, hmm. then that's treason and punishable by death. I'm waiting. If that's what you do.
point here is that when someone is doing something that is um, not gameful, not part of gameful employment, the person is actually purchasing the ability to do that with money, with uh, the actual money uh, that she is not making in the income. And so, when you see a woman who's sitting in the uh, park with a Tell me all about book <laughs> and uh, her headphones in her ear, that's her preferred way to spend that particular time, and she's paying money in order to do it. And if you go up to her and you force her to engage with you in a way that uh, she was not prepared to do before, <laughs> you're actually stealing money out of her pocket. And that's why it's unethical to um, bother women who make it very clear from the context that they're not wanting to be bothered. That's the reason why it's actually unethical to do this. It's not illegal, but it is unethical and it makes you kind of a dickish person. So when you see women just out and about doing their thing uh, that does not involve interacting with you, <laughs> Before you go up and introduce that woman to your boner, remember that she is paying money in order to not interact with people. She's actually paying money in order to spend her time this way. And when you force her to spend her time in a different way, you're taking money out of her pocket. No different from yes. if uh, you were not going to um, you know, see a movie and you paid uh, you know, the 15 bucks for the ticket. And then someone comes along and says, Tell me whatever you want. I'm not going to let you watch that movie. You're going to come talk to me instead. You know, the person has just mm. stolen, you know, 15 bucks from you. Just me. ask. And it's the same way if you are uh, walk up and talk to a lady who clearly doesn't want to speak to anyone. So, uh, next time, I definitely will go into the uh, how to pick up ladies. <laughs> If just wa walking up to them on the street is uh, not the right way to do it, how do you do it? I kind of started touching on it before, but I'll go into it more detail next time. And we'll kill the unseen eye, which will be super easy. And uh, then we'll finish up this quest, and uh, I don't know what else. But uh, join me then. Later.